example of graphing a parabola uh, in the perfect square form, uh, but in this case we're going to have to force this trinomial to uh, become a perfect square form. Uh, so we're going to complete the square on this, and we're only going to concentrate really on the first two terms. So we're going to rewrite it as x squared plus 4x. We're going to leave that space, and that 7 is going to have to stay on this side of the equation. It won't go on the g of x side very nicely. Um, so we'll just push it over and just leave us a little space here. Alright, and then we're just going to complete the square. Half of 4 is uh, 2, positive 2. And if we square that, we're going to add 4. Um, our problem again is balancing. Uh, we just added 4 to the right hand side of this equation. And I can't touch the g of x, so at the same time I add 4, I'm also going to subtract 4. It looks kind of funny, but it balances itself out. 4 minus 4 is 0, and we're back to x squared plus 4x plus 7. But we don't want to go backwards, we want to go forwards. Um, so the next step is um, to write it as a perfect square. So we're going to get g of x is equal to this perfect square of x plus 2, remember that half number is the number that goes in this spot here, and then we have at the end here plus 7 minus 4, so that'll be a plus 3. Alright, so right off the bat we know that the vertex is going to be negative 2 from here and positive 3 uh, from there. And then all we have to do is find x-intercepts and y-intercepts. Uh, and it really doesn't matter which form you go from. You could go from this one, or you could go from that one. I'll say um, right now that this form, the g of x expanded polynomial, is easier to find x-intercepts. And this form here will be easier to find uh, y-intercepts. So let's start with this one up here. Let's start by finding our y-intercepts. So when we're looking for y-intercepts, we are going to let x is equal uh, to 0. Alright, so we are going to have um, g of 0 is equal to uh, 0 squared plus 4 times 0 uh, plus 7. We'll use that um, expanded form up there. And this just gives us 7. So we're going to have this coordinate uh, x is equal to 0, y is equal to 7. Alright, and then for x-intercepts, I'm going to leave it in the uh, perfect square form for this one. I think it'll be easier. We're going to let y equal 0, or the entire function equal 0. And we're going to get 0 is equal to uh, x plus 2 all squared is uh, plus 3. And to start solving this, I'll subtract 3 from both sides. And we're going to get x plus 2 all squared is equal to negative 3. Well, here's a problem. If we square root both sides of the equation, you should be able to tell right off that we're not going to get any real answers. This is i squared to 3, technically plus or minus i squared to 3. So this thing has no x-intercepts. They're not real numbers. Alright, so the only thing we have to work with is this vertex of negative uh, 2, 3, and this y-intercept of 0, 7. Well, let's see what happens with our graph. Alright, so here's the two pieces of information that I have um, to work with. So let's plot what we have. Negative 2, 3, so that's 2 to the left and 3 up, which would go right here. And 0, 7 would be nowhere, and then straight up 7 units. And we get this point here. Now remember, we still have this axis of symmetry that comes right through the vertex, vertically. And any points that are on the right-hand side of it must also appear on the left-hand side of it. Um, so this point here is two units away um, along the top. So it's going to be two units to get to the x symmetry and two more units to give us that extra point. I call that the reflective point. It's usually, it always is a reflection of the y-intercept. Alright, so we can get a parabola to go through here and notice it'll never ever touch the x-intercept. Alright, so here's a cleaner picture and the parabola that goes through those three points. And that's it. That would be a graph of G of X.